Closed captioning for Lift Up Jesus is paid for by our friends at Galpin Ford of Los Angeles. Evangelism is so important to Dudley Rutherford. He's written an entire book on the subject called Compelled, The Irresistible Call to Share Your Faith. People across the country have been blessed by this challenging book, like reader Melissa, who shared, Pastor Dudley writes that God is more concerned with our availability than our ability. Despite the fact that I am rather introverted, his book has inspired me to more freely and confidently share the gospel with others. In his latest book, Pastor Dudley shares his own experiences and the tools he personally uses to share Jesus with others. Whether you're a new Christian or a seasoned evangelist, this book is a perfect guide to help you effectively share the message of salvation. It also makes a great gift for family members and friends. Compel, the irresistible call to share your faith can be yours right now for a gift of any size to Lift of Jesus Ministries. Call the number on the screen and get your copy or visit our website, liftupjesus.com. Compel, the irresistible call to share your faith. Sharing Christ with the world is far easier than you think. Get your copy today. Hello again and welcome as we lift up Jesus with Pastor Dudley. I'm Michael North. We're continuing our series today on the Kings of the Bible, and we will be looking at the life of King Hezekiah. God truly blessed King Hezekiah in the beginning and even healed him when he was on the verge of death. However, in the end, King Hezekiah lost everything he had because of his pride. His story is a reminder that everything we have comes from God and that our humble surrender to Him is essential for a blessed life. We join Pastor Dudley now with today's message on King Hezekiah. There's a phrase that goes, it's good to be king. Why don't you say it's good to be king? Say it. It's good to be king. It's good to be king. Because many of us erroneously believe that if only we were king, if only we were in charge, that everything would be better. I think of our last two presidents, uh, President Barack Obama and our current president, Donald Trump. And how would you ever possibly even begin to gauge the number of people who criticize those two men? I know it's fueled by the media, but whenever you criticize one of our leaders, one or both of them, what you're really saying is that you know better than them. What you're saying is that you would do a better job than them. And what you're saying in actuality is that if only you were in charge, life would be grand. Deep, deep down, we actually believe that. Take your Bibles again in 2 Kings chapter 18. And the first thing I want you to note is that, and I hope you're listening, that it's not always good to be king. Primarily because A, it's a heavy responsibility that you bear to serve all the people under your care. That's not an easy job. B, you're never going to make everyone happy. Everyone is going to criticize you. That's, we prove that every day in this country. C, you never know who's trying to take your throne. You always have to sleep with one eye open, so to speak. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And ultimately, D, one day you will answer to God because God is the one who ultimately raises and uproots kings and kingdoms. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 221, I want you to write this down, that God changes the times. He changes the seasons. That God is the one that deposes kings and raises up other kings. It's important for us to note that because whether you're a real king like David or Solomon or Hezekiah or you're just a pretend king over your own little world, 
we will all one day face a day of reckoning with the one and true God of this universe. You will stand before him and we will all give an account. Can you say amen? amen. Hezekiah, write this down, he was known for three things. So if you read his stories, there's three things that pop out. Two of them are good things and one of them is a bad thing. And again, I like explaining or teaching stories in the Bible, some of these stories you might not have ever heard of. And again, that's the importance of having a Bible and reading through. And so we're going to start with 2 Kings 18. We're going to look at these three things. We'll start with the two good things, and then we'll share the bad. But the first thing, the good thing, the best thing, write this down. Hezekiah was a king who trusted in the Lord, and he was successful. He trusted in the Lord, and he was successful. And I want to begin reading with verse 2 in our story, 2 Kings 18. The Bible says in verse 2 that he, Hezekiah, was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for how many years? For almost 30 years. He was king of Israel, Judah, Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. Verse 3, now here's, here's, why he's, here's the good. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. Verse 4, he removed the high places. He smashed uh, the sacred stones. He cut down the Asheroth poles. These were all false gods. And he broke into pieces the bronze snake that Moses had made. For up to that time, the Israelites had been burning incense to it. And verse 5 says that Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Bible says there was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. And then we come to verse 6. He held fast. Everybody say, held fast. He held fast to the what? To the Lord. And he did not cease to follow him. And the Bible says he kept the commands of the Lord that had been given through Mo that he had given Moses. And that is our goal. Isn't that our goal? I, I want that for every one of you. Every one of us should hold fast. To the Lord we should serve him wholeheartedly we should keep the commands that the Lord has given us that's our goal and I've shared this with you a couple of weeks ago that the kings of Israel some were good and some were bad in fact the next king is Hezekiah's son Manasseh the Bible says that he was a bad king but as you look at the good kings and the bad kings every time there was a king like Hezekiah that decided to serve the Lord, God would place his hand of blessing over the entire nation of Israel. And every time a king did bad and the king did evil, God would remove his hand of blessing from the nation of Israel. And I want you to know that that's not only true for a nation, it's true for you and I as individuals. I want you to look at verse 7. It says, And the Lord was with him, and he, Hezekiah, was successful, now watch this, in whatever he undertook. How would you like to be successful in whatever you, ever, whatever you did? How many of you would like that? I want to say this, you might not be a king of a nation or an empire here today, but whatever is under your control, whatever God has placed you in charge of, if you will honor God, if you will follow God, if you will keep his commands, follow his plan, I believe that God's hand will be upon you. I believe that. And you will be successful in whatever you do. I want you to write this down. Being a king is always a heavy responsibility. Don't ever think that's an easy job. But remember and write this down. Don't ever forget where your blessings come from. Don't ever forget where your success comes from. And my prayer for you, just in case you want to know, for anyone who walked in here today, 
My prayer for you is that you would always trust in the Lord and that whatever God has placed under your responsibility, that you will understand that it's your task is to follow God, to obey God, to honor Him, and I believe if you'll do that, I believe that you will, in fact, be successful in whatever you undertake. I believe that. So the first thing that he did that was good was he trusted in the Lord. The second thing, write this down, and here's what most people know Hezekiah for, that he was touched by God's healing hand. And I want you to go over to 2 Kings chapter 20. Some of you won't believe this is actually in the Bible. That's why you always need to have your Bibles as we go through these stories. Starting with verse 1. Everybody say verse 1. In those days, Hezekiah became what? He got sick. He was at the point of death. And the prophet Isaiah, the preacher, son of Amos, went to him and said to the king who was on his deathbed, this is what the Lord says. You need to put your house in order because you are going to die. In other words, the doctor didn't say you're going to die. God said you're going to die. That's a whole different story. Because you're going to die, you will not recover. And after Isaiah came into Hezekiah, he walked in, he saw him on his deathbed. He said, Hezekiah, I want you to know that God sent me here to tell you that you need to get your house in order because you're not going to recover. He turned and he walked out. He walked out of the room. So Hezekiah is in there all by himself. He had just received this news. He did what I think you and I would do. In verse 2, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he began to pray to the Lord. Because when the doctor says you're not going to live, that's one thing. But when God says you're not going to live, you have no choice but to pray. In verse 3, he said, Lord, remember how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion. And I have done what is good in your eyes. And he had. And the Bible says that Hezekiah, he wept bitterly. You remember Isaiah that had left? The Bible says in verse 4 that before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Isaiah was on his way out and God tapped him on the shoulder. He said, Isaiah, I want you to go back and tell Hezekiah the leader of my people, that I have changed my mind. This is what the Lord, the God of your father David says, that I have heard your prayer and I have seen your tears and that I, the God of the universe, will heal you. And on the third day, you thought you're on the deathbed, but in three days, you're going to go up to the temple of the Lord. Verse 6, and I, God, will add fifth years to your life and I will deliver you from this city and from the hand of the king of Assyria I think we need to give God a hand I want you to write this down we serve a God of miracles and we serve a God who answers prayer some of you forget this from time to time I want to ask show of hands, and certainly do not raise your hand if you do not believe this, but how many of you have ever witnessed or experienced in your life or someone else's life what you would call a miracle of God? How many of you have ever experienced that? I would actually say some of you actually just sitting here would be a miracle in and of itself. How many of you have ever witnessed or experienced God answering a prayer in your life or someone else's? You'd give testimony to that. Now, I do want you to know that sometimes the answer is no. Christians need to be reminded that God doesn't always say yes. You ask God for something, sometimes He says yes, sometimes He says no, sometimes He says later. And we as Christians have to, in faith, accept the no as well as we accept the yes. But God answers prayer. He is a God of miracles, and He's a God who answers prayer. Can you just imagine, I'm going to ask you to imagine a couple things. Can you imagine you're at the end of your life, and you're in a hospital room over here at Kaiser Hospital, 
And the doctors have told you it doesn't look good. And there's a knock on the door, and you look up, and it's me, Pastor Dudley. (laughs) And you're going to say, oh, I'm so excited to see you. I'm so glad you came to see me. The doctors have just given me this terrible report. And I'm glad you're here because I need you to pray for me as though my prayers are going to somehow help you. And I say to you, well, I, I can pray for you, but i got to tell you the truth. I was in my office over there at Porter Ranch, and God tapped me on the shoulder. And I said, yes, Lord. And the Lord sent me over here, me over here for me to tell you something, specifically from him. Well, what is it? Well, I don't know how to tell you this, but the Lord just wanted me to confirm with you that you are going to die. <laughs> That's exactly what happened when Isaiah shows up, and he gives... Hezekiah the bad news and he leaves and Hezekiah begins to pray and he begins to petition and he begins to cry out to God and about 20 minutes later Isaiah walks back into the room and Isaiah says Hezekiah I want you to know that God has decided to answer your prayer and you're not going to believe this but he has decided to give you 15 more years of life and not only that He is promising you right now that all of your enemies will be defeated. Hezekiah doesn't believe it's true. He asked, if you read the scriptures in verse 8, he goes, how do do I know this is true? He 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 was like doubting Thomas. He just couldn't believe it. Have you ever not believed when God answered your prayer? That is ridiculous. If you pray in faith, you ought to accept the answer in faith. Amen? But he doesn't believe it, and he says, uh, Hezekiah says, I need a sign, I need a sign from God. How do I know? How do I know that God's going to keep his word? And Isaiah says, do you see those steps? And there were this stairway in uh, Jerusalem. They were called the stairs of Ahaz, which was a former king, an actual bad king, who had built some steps, or they had named the steps after King Ahaz. It's called the stairway of Ahaz of Ahaz and when the sun was setting there was a shadow that moved up these steps you know when the sun sets the shadows shift and so they looked out at the stairway the stairway of Ahaz and the shadow I don't know maybe it was like halfway and Isaiah says do you want a sign and Hezekiah says yes I need a sign how do I know God's going to keep his word and, and Isaiah said, "Would well, you see the shadow there as those steps have moved up? He goes, I'll let you choose. Would you like to see as a sign those shadows move forward or would you like to see those shadows move backward 10 steps? I'll let you choose. And the Bible says, I want to read it to you in verse 10. Hezekiah says, it's a simple matter for the shadow to go forward 10 steps. I want to see those shadows move back 10 steps. Backwards, he says. And so verse 11, then the prophet Isaiah called upon who? The Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back the 10 steps that it had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. I want to ask you a question and be honest with me. What would you do if you were the president of the United States of America and you had dedicated yourself to the Lord 100% to follow all of God's commands and you had torn down every false idol in this country, the United States of America. You had gotten rid of everything that was evil. You got rid of all gun violence. You got rid of all prejudices. You got rid of pornography. Pornography ceased to exist in this country. Abortions uh, ceased because no one is ever engaged in sexual immorality ever again. Hollywood has begun to produce only wholesome movies. And churches are flourishing all over the country. And we actually put prayer back into the school system. We nailed the Ten Commandments back on the walls of the schools. And people all over this country are reading God's Word and following God's Word. And one day, the prophet preacher shows up at the White House to tell you that you're going to die. 
and you get down on your knees and you ask God for a miracle. And within 30 minutes, the preacher says to you, God has heard your prayer. He's going to give you 15 more years of your life. Every enemy you face will be defeated. My question to you is, how are you going to respond to that? Would you be grateful? Are you sure? Would you be humbled? Would you declare a national day of prayer and worship for this country? Yes, you would. Hezekiah, he trusted in the Lord. He was successful. He was touched by God's healing hand. And the very next thing that happened, write this down, this is the bad. After all that good, He was tempted by pride, and he lost everything. The very first thing, not the second, not the third, the very first thing that he does after receiving the promise of 15 more years of life, he invites the enemy of Israel, the Babylonians, into the palace. He gets all prideful and arrogant and full of himself, and he's escorting the Babylonians around the palace and all over Judah. And the Bible says in verse 13 that he says these words. Hezekiah received the messengers and he showed them all that was in his storehouses, his silver, his gold, the spices and the fine oil, his armory, and everything found among his treasures. Write this down. The king forgot the most important truth that everything you have comes from God. After all that blessing, all that blessing, he forgot the most important thing, that God from his hands, he places in our hands, everything that we have and i don't care if you're an actual king sitting out here or if you're a self-made man or you're a self-made woman who's worked your way to the top of your profession everything you have comes from a god who loves you and a god who sustains you it was indeed god's storehouse it was god's silver it was god's gold and god's spices It was God's treasures. It was God's temple. Yet Hezekiah calls them my storehouse, my silver, my gold, my armory, my treasury. He might as well have said my temple. Write this down. He actually started to think that he was above God, that he didn't need God. And as a result of Hezekiah's pride and arrogance, guess who showed up again? Isaiah the prophet. Let me tell you something. When the preacher keeps showing up at your house, it is not a good thing. (laughs) And he says in verse 16, hear the word of the Lord. In other words, wake up, you knucklehead. And he says in verse 17, the time will surely come. Hezekiah, you can set your watch by it. When everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon and nothing will be left, says the Lord. The everything that you said was yours that you boasted about to the Babylonians will be taken away from you by the same Babylonians that you were trying to impress. And not only that, he then says in verse 18, some of your own descendants will be carried off into captivity, and they were. Ladies and gentlemen, I look at stories like this in the Bible, and I have to ask myself, what is the moral of the story? What is God, why is this in the Bible? Why does God share with us the history of King Hezekiah? Because of God's blessings in our life, the fact that he loves us, the fact that he provides for us, the fact that he protects us, that he cares for us, that he has rescued us, that he has redeemed us, and that he places in our hands a certain amount of time, a certain amount of treasure, a certain amount of talent. And whenever we view those things that he places in our hands that belong to him, and we consider those things as ours or mine, it speaks of pride and arrogance in our lives. And the moral of the story is this. As quickly as God places those things in your hands, 
he can just as quickly remove those very same things. And your, your best decision, besides accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, is to be grateful for all the things that God has placed under your care. You should thank Him every day. I, I, I mean, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. If, God, if you have any, anything within your provision or care that you watch over, you need to thank God. And you need to note every day that everything you have comes from Him. And you need to set aside the first fruits, the tithe, and bring it back to Him. It belongs to Him. It all belongs to Him. But bring Him your best. Bring Him the first tenth. And I believe that you will live under the blessing of God all the days of your life. I believe that. We hope this program has been a blessing to you. And Pastor Dudley's message today is part of an entire series called the LA Kings of the Bible. This series is available to everyone watching today by either calling the number on your screen or visiting our website, liftupjesus.com. This series, The LA Kings of the Bible, is available on either CD or DVD. So why not contact us right now and get your copy today? People across the country are writing to tell us how much they're enjoying Dudley Rutherford's latest book, Compelled, The Irresistible Call to Share Your Faith. Like reader Bobby, who wrote, this book is an asset in helping to help others find their way to salvation without sounding like a fanatic. And now it's your turn. If this book has made a difference for you, we'd love to know. So many people could be touched by your encouragement and recommendation. Call the number on the screen or visit our website right now and tell us how compelled the irresistible call to share your faith has been helpful. You can even go to Amazon and write a review of the book in your own words. The truth is, you could play an important part in helping others discover this great message from Pastor Dudley. When we have the boldness, motivation, and tools to share the gospel, Jesus Christ will be lifted up so that the whole world might believe. If you've yet to receive this book, now is the perfect time to call. It also makes a great gift for a friend, coworker, or family member. Compel the irresistible call to share your faith. Sharing Christ with the world is far easier than you think. Get your copy today. Join us every week for another life-changing message from Pastor Dudley. You can visit us anytime on our website and discover the many resources available there to help you with your daily Christian walk. And while you're there, please consider partnering with us to help support this ministry. Pastor Dudley has a burden to reach the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we can only do that with your financial help. You can also connect daily with Pastor Dudley through many forms of social media. We thank you for being a part of this ministry and invite you to join us again next week at the same time. Remember, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. Jesus.